See, there is a great debate now around this cartoon. They, they are saying that suddenly they discovered cartoon pedagogy. Now, do the pot makers, the shoe makers, the killers of the land, the fisher women and men, the washer women and men, uh, their children, do they understand what a cartoon is? Are these intellectuals ready for teaching them uh, in any, any language that their status could change? Did they write anything about them so far? Did they draw anything in terms of pictures or cartoons showing their dignified status in the society? So, who are they to tell us that how we should define our icons? Who are they to tell us how we should construct our language? Who are they to tell us how they should, uh, how we should, uh, we should work our means, uh, ways and means to change our status? Now, I would certainly listen to those uh, who worked ever around our, uh, our our life, our social change. Well, there were many Western sociologists who have come to this country and worked among tribals, worked among Dalits, worked among Obisis, worked among shepherds, and they gave script to certain languages. They gave us English today to us. And I would certainly review. Uh, you know, William Carey who came to this country and gave us English language. I certainly revere Macaulay who gave us English in, in, in a country where we did not have even the right to read and write a book or a letter. The, and we, our thumbs were cut, our hands were cut, our, our fingers were cut, leg was poured into it. None of these intellectuals critic that tradition. So, Today, what are they telling us? That they should define what should be there in the textbook. Now, there could be one or two here and there, but the point is, they are trying to put us in a dock, in a, in a boat, in a court, and say that you don't know how to understand a maker. You don't know how to understand fully. I, if a Dalit says that you don't know how to understand American, I, I will listen. But if a Brahmin, if an upper caste person who has not done anything for uh, OBCs and Dalits, well, I, 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 I don't take their word seriously. And nor do masses should take them seriously. Nor, do, nor should the government take them seriously. Why? Where did the cartoon problem start? It is Tamil Nadu Dalit movement again found out this cartoon is absolutely bad. It is Dalit political party which found. Today the same Tamil Nadu is saying that in first class book there is a cartoon which attacks the anti in the agitation. Which, which treats the anti in the agitation, in the agitation as Gunda, street Gunda agitation. Now how will they justify that? Do these people want to impose Indiana? When we want English to our uh, our people, none of these people, neither Yogendra Yadav, nor Swaraj Pansikar, nor uh, uh, you know uh, 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 Aditya Nigam, or uh, or Ardha Chatterjee, or or anyone, even Niverita Menon, or the feminists of, of Apakas who don't understand, they did not say a single word about whether. Dalit tribals obviously should be taught in English medium or not in the schools. Now they want our children to be taught through cartoons. What is this cartoon pedagogy that they are talking? Now this this cartoon this cartoon shows that the Tamils have no brains. They are opposing Hindi and Hindi is the greatest language of this country. Hindi nationalism should come to south. And this is what Yogendra Yadav and Swat Palsikar and all these people believe. 
they were all hindi wala they study in english they children are put in english and when tamil nadu saved the whole country from uh, imposing hindi they are humiliated in this cartoon don't we understand their language don't we understand their selection now this is a very serious issue so they they they, they pick up a cartoon which shankar deliberately draws of treating a baker as a nut a reserved nut who doesn't understand law and it was a great nehru who understands law and they pick up a cartoon which says that the anti hindi educators are street gundas and saying this is nothing but intellectual gundagi now you cannot treat our history our culture our dravidian culture you are part of the aryan culture now what are you talking now see we we get we get angry with this because how can you treat an anti hindi education which saved south from the slavery of aryan language the slavery of sanskrit language the historical destruction of the hindi imposition of hindi on the entire south who were basically dravidian black people like buffaloes now why is the why is they select this cartoon and and put in a in a medium of text uh, for the school children who who need to understand that dravidian movements are far greater movements than the the north indian uh, aryan movements now do you want to tell us that arya samaj is great do you want to tell us that sanskrit is great do you want to tell us that brahma samaj is great no you must have included one or two sentences here i am sympathetic to that but when you are saying that kantya ilaya is uh, projecting ambedkar as a prophet he does not know social science language he is not a social scientist are you the social scientist in this country did you write about the this the greatness of science of shoe making the greatness of pot making you you talk about terracotta as 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 a as a source of history but you don't talk about pot maker as historian maker of the history it is i who talk, talked about it it is we who talked about it. therefore if that intellectual gundagiri continues to operate even in the secular school even in the democratic school even in the socialist school we will not tolerate that is where i differed with the radical communist movement also the maoist movement is a movement which started here i was part of it why did i differ that there was no marx there there was no mao there there was no uh, ho chi minh there there was no che guevara there there was only a brahmanic ideological elements who are working towards the revolution to enslave us for five more hundred years that's where we 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 fought them and came out and that is where my my journey of writing uh, you know buddha as uh, as political philosopher started that's where my journey of writing why i'm not a hindu started that's where my journey of writing buffalo nationalism started that is where my journey of writing uh, you know the other nationalism started that is where my journey of writing a novel of an untouchable god started so whom are they saying telling this today this nation whom does this nation belong to does it belong to our great uh, uh, grandparents or um, um, grandmothers grandfathers or their grandparents and their grandmothers so this is the question that needs to be settled around whether it is cartoon whether it is medium of instruction now you want to impose hindi on us you want to impose cartoons which our children don't know at all we who want to impose uh, your own method of pedagogy and you don't want to put uh, a dozen obcs a, a dozen uh, dalits a dozen women who are sensitive from dalit background in the committee of textbook writing you put one or two uh, here and there Uh, they, they must be made uh, they will be made uh, 
absolutely muted people there and all. So this cannot go for long. So why do, well, they think that I am supporting parliament, I am supporting ruling media. Yes, Ambedkar gave us a constitution and a parliament as against Kautilya's Ardhashastra and Manus Manudharna. As against monarchy. Monarchy was the system of Brahmin and Banyas and Kshatriyas. And Kautilya's Ardhashastra was a, a, a political uh, statecraft text of uh, you know uh, 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 empowerment of the Brahmin Banya Kshatriya forces. Manu's text was a social artist text as again as that he gave a constitution. He he played a very legal role. But prophets are legal pundits. Prophets are economic pundits. Prophets are social pundits. Prophets are spiritual pundits. That's what prophets are. Therefore he was the only person in the nationalist period who was like a prophet, knows everything. And that is where sometimes we, we, we I think that there, there could have been a huge uh, a divine spirit in him working uh, in, in a situation of uh, where Gandhi, Nehru, uh, Subhar Chandra Bose, Sardar Patel, who were like witness before him. In Eritrea, they did not do PhD in, in Western countries. It was something impossible in those days. They were not economists. They were not sociologists. They were not political scientists. They were not legal pundits. But he was. And he was a great spiritual liberator. So therefore, I call him a prophet. And you don't understand the language of prophet. How many of you read the entire Bible to understand the language of Prophet Jesus. He liberated the Samaritan untouchable. He liberated the uh, Gentiles who were Sudras. He liberated the tribes like the tribes of India. And he fought Pharisees of Israel who were exactly like Brahmins of India. And he took them away from the temples like the Hindu temples, Tirupati, Badrachalam Badra Rama or Ayodhya Rama and gave a connection between God and people, not in the temple, but wherever they were. He was the philosopher who established individualism. He was the philosopher who constructed a theory for separation of state and religion. That is where he said, when the taxpayer asked him, should we pay tax? Jesus said, given to see, given to see, unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Given to God what belongs to God. That is, give to state what state deserves, give to religion what religion deserves. So he separated them. Don't you see that there is social science When he talked about the kingdom of God, where the first will be the last and the last will be the first. What is he talking? He was talking about a state where the Israeli Brahmins will be the last, the Israeli untouchable will be the first. If you apply that to India, he is talking about now, in a new language, that the Brahmins of India will be the last and the untouchable Dalits of India will be the first. Now this language, Ambedkar translated into a social reality. So in that sense, Ambedkar is not only a follower of Buddha, but Ambedkar is a follower of Jesus. He, he, he translated that great statement of Jesus, Mom, uh, Jesus, who was the prophet, the son of God, an abstract God, not an ideal God, that in the kingdom of God, the first will be the last, the last will be the first. That means these intellectuals who are in the universities today, who are talking again as again as Ambedkar, Pule, Periyar, uh, and want to whip them in these textbooks, they should become the last one. And the SCST OBC, who were in the last for 3000 years, they should be leading the universities as the first ones. And this route was chosen by Ambedkar in the 
true spirit of Jesus. And how did he implement the agenda of Muhammad? See, Prophet Muhammad was the first prophet after Jesus, the third prophet, who said that celibacy is not good. There is no need for celibate life and there is no need for hypocrisy. If one does not want to marry, one can remain, but all can marry. God does not treat sexual engagement as impure. And Muhammad created that, you know, marriage as a divine system. Every man, every woman can marry. Childbirth is pure. Delivery is pure. And all man-woman relations are absolutely human. That Ambedkar practiced here. How? He even reformed Buddhism. He took Buddhism with his wife. He did not become a wifeless monk. And that is a remarkable uh, implementation of Prophet Muhammad's, you know, man-woman relationship in divine right? So therefore, Ambedkar is a multiple expression of various prophets who liberated this world one by one, step by step, period after period. And now in India, Ambedkar has liberated untouchable connected them to Buddha, to Jesus and to Muhammad. And I am saying today they have the right to go to any religion but not remain Hindu. That is what a prophetic role is. These people don't understand what I am saying. He, 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 he has an agenda to completely dismantle Hinduism. That's Yogendra Yadav agree with it. Does Swas Palsikar agree with it? Does uh, Adityanism, who is attacking uh, you know, Dalit intellectuals, agree with this? That Hinduism is the source of all discrimination, all inequality. And Ambedkar's agenda was to completely demolish and completely remove idol worship. He, he, he didn't want idol worship. Construction of idols today is coming up because you have millions of idols in it. Therefore, Dalits are using Ambedkar statue as an idol, Buddha statue as an idol, because you, the thorn has to be removed with the thorn itself. Therefore, they are doing it. But over a period of time, this country will overcome all idols, and philosophical debates will take place. Ambedkar can be debated. Ambedkar could be taught. They don't know. Jesus was debated in all universities, Cambridge, Harvard, uh, Oxford, through theological courses. The universities came into existence only to debate Jesus. So why do they think that uh, uh, a prophet should not be debated? A prophet cannot be scrutinized. He can be, but with respect, dignity, not with uh, not with a culture of treating the prophet as untouchable, as indignified human being, as a dull-headed person to be whipped up in a textbook. No. That is what I am opposed and all Dalits will be enraged if they continue to uphold these views and if they continue to draw such conclusions.